Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, welcome to this Parallel Project Training Podcast. We're, we're on a quite interesting topic, which is um, investment appraisal. Yes. Which um, actually most project managers get support from their finance department to um, Yeah, so to just leave it at that and stop. <laughs> stop, <laughs> yeah. um, But it's useful to understand uh, the principles of it at a, at a high level. Really. And what we're doing with investment appraisers is we're just checking that the return that we're going to get from the project is worth the investment that we're going to make. And this is assuming that we can express the benefit in a, in a financial way. We're we're assuming that we can we're making assumptions about what's going to happen in the future yes. in the same way you would do with costs. Yes, that's right. But it, because the benefits last longer, then it might be over a number of years, so it's more uncertain. Yes. First thing to say here is um, you'd be glad to know this is not an accountancy exam, yes. so you won't have to do the, um, the calculations and the maths. And um, if you do have to do any of these, we strongly recommend you go and find someone who. <laughs> who knows what they're talking about who, who can do it because <laughs> <laughs> usually most organisations have policies and procedures about how these have to be done as part of their governance yes. arrangements really so there's a couple of techniques that are quite commonly used um, and there are, there are other techniques more than these but the, the first of these is payback and that's that's the easiest to understand actually because that just says how quickly am I going to get my cash back so it's the, I call it the dragon den one really you know when I'm going to give you fifty thousand pounds, how long am I going to wait till I get that cash back? Mm. And and so the project that gives you the fastest payback is the um, the, the project that we choose to do. Well, if that was important to you, yes. If you had loads of money in the bank, you might wait for a later return. That's right. In which case, the 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 the, 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 the assumption that the earliest payback is best will be wrong. So you'd need to change your assumptions based on what you want to achieve. Well, that's the weakness of payback because just because you get the money back fast, it doesn't mean that's necessarily the best investment mm, for mm, you. You know, mm. if you had two projects, one that's going to give you um, a payback, say both are going to give you a payback in a year. One's going to give you five thousand pounds in four years' time. One's going to give you fifty thousand pounds in four years' time. You choose the one that's going to give you fifty thousand pounds in four years' time, even though they've got the same payback. Okay. So you need to look at the whole, the whole life cost, really. Okay. So they're quick and easy, and uh, but, but importantly, they don't take into account the future value of money, do they? They, they assume that four thousand, fifty thousand pounds in four years' time is, is, is the same as having forty grand, fifty grand now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And most of us, in most, when the economy is working normally, <laughs> would rather have fifty thousand pounds now than fifty thousand pounds in four years' time. Yeah. If someone came to you in the street and said. Do you want 50 grand now or do you want to wait four years for your 50 grand? Most people will go, I'll have me 50 grand now, please. Hmm. Why? Uh, bird in the hands, worth one in the bush. That's a nice saying, but why? Why? Um, why would we rather have the cash now? Because you can use that cash to do other things. So you're not locking up your cash. Hmm. You can use that cash to invest in other projects. Hmm. So that's why organisations like short projects, really, because they can, they've can they got a limited amount of cash, so they can... Mm. So if you'd have gone back to someone in 1742 and said you can have... Oh, my gosh. ...a million pounds in in 30 years' time... Or, or a million pounds 2010, today. Yes. Or a million pounds a day, what would you rather have? Yes. So the answer would be the same, wouldn't it? A million pounds, yes. They still want a million pounds. That's why Doctor Who's not... I would have thought Doctor Who should be the richest man in the world, really. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> let's not get into time travel. <laughs> right, okay. so what we need to do is we need to say, well, here's a project that's promisingly £50,000 in, in five years' time. Or as we've got in the book, actually, let's do this one. In year seven, we're promising £10,000. Mm-hmm. How much would you prepare to lend me today for that um, £10,000? How much am I going to give you to get ten thousand pounds back in seven years? I'm promising my uh, this is my project, and I'm promising you, Mister. You can be the bank manager. Yeah, I'm promising you to pay you back ten thousand pounds in in um, seven years' time. I'd look at what the interest rates were. Yeah, and I would how dodgy I am, and I would calculate <laughs> um, how much I would have to invest now to get ten thousand pounds. Uh huh. And I would offer you that. I'd, no, I wouldn't. I'd offer oh, you less than that. I think you'd be <laughs> quite analytical. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd give you, I'd give you five hundred quid to get 
five five thousand yeah, pounds to seven, get ten grand back in seven years. You give me five, yes, and I think that's what most people do. It's more of a gut feel. And what factors are you taking into account in deciding how much you'd lend me? How much I can get back in interest rates? So what's the current prevailing interest rate? Mm. And then also, you probably also think about how likely it is that I am going to pay you back. Yes, that's right. Am I going to be around in seven years' time to, to actually, service that? Yeah, to actually pay it back. That I owe you. Yeah. So I'd probably, I mean, you're a pretty flaky character, really. So I'd probably, I'd, I'd want, I don't I'd pay you 3,000 3, pounds, not 5,000 pounds. Right. So what you're doing is you're discounting my promise. But if I thought you were really trustworthy and honest and all the rest <laughs> of it, then I would, it would just be the flat rate. So if I was the Chancellor of the Exchequer, that's for right. instance. So that's the same for companies, then, isn't it? Yeah. So when someone lends you money, they're going to look at how much the base rate is. So all things considered, if, if there was no risk at, at all, this is what I'd lend it to yes. you at. But I know there's a bit of risk, so I'm going to inflate it a bit. Yes, so right. I would, I would, and then as a consequence, I would deflate what I paid you now. That's right. That's right. The thing that confuses people is discounting. Mm-hmm. Why am I reducing that future promise rather than increasing well, it? Well, because we're more used to compound interest in building societies. Mm. So you're used to money going up. Yes. Even though it might not be keeping rate of inflation yes. or anything like that, but it's yes. still going up. But this is not saving money. This, this is, is investing money in a project, so it's it's like a mirror image, really. So that that's just why okay. we, why we discount it, really. Okay. So there's a discount rate that you apply that gives you a discount factor, and you multiply the discount factor by the amount of money you think you're going to get in that period of time. Yeah. So in seven years, if I'm going to get ten thousand pound back, I might choose a discount factor of say point five one three, for argument's sake. Yeah. And then you base that on saying, well, this money is worth 10% to me That's each right. year. That's right. And the, the, so what that means is that I don't include £10,000 in my calculations. I include £5,130 in my calculations. So the value of that in, in seven years' time is only worth, you'd only lend me £5,000. Yes, that's right. So it's, 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 it's in effect reducing the value of that project. Yeah, the benefits mm. of that project. But it's just an adjustment. Mm. It's not... You know, uh, when we get to year seven, if everything comes out as promised, I will give you 10,000 quid. Mm. But you're saying, well, actually, because I'm waiting seven years, I'm going to just, like buying a, getting a discount in the shop, it's just saying, well, actually, mm. it's, it's, I'm making an adjustment to that. That's right. Okay, got that. And if I'm, if I'm higher risk... So who decides what the, what the actual rate is then? You can do exams in that. Can you? Yes, you can do. Yes, you can do them. Um, because because once if, you're in a chartered account, you if, can then go and do further yeah, exams right. and how to calculate, uh, calculate that. Discount <laughs> Yes, That's but the saying. truth is, if if you choose one rate over another rate, you could get a different answer, couldn't you? Yes. And so there's uncertainty about which rate to use. Yes. Okay. So let's do if if you had a poor credit record and yeah. came to me and said I've got this project and I'm going to give you ten thousand pounds in a few years you might say well actually I need to discount it a bit more aggressively so um, you might say as you've got in the book here you might say um, I'm going to discount it I'm going to take twenty percent off each year yes. and reduce the value of your promise by twenty percent each year so I would only give you two thousand seven hundred quid yes okay I'd only count that as worth two thousand seven hundred quid rather than one five thousand quid okay so who's right. Who's right? It depends on the day you go and get the money, really. That's right. So the answer is nobody, really, so until, until doing, you actually sign the bit of paper. So if we, if we, John Bolton and Paul Neighbour Building Firm wanted to do a property development out there... We'd make an assumption about what the discount... We'd build up our models, we'd make an assumption, then we'd go to the bank and say, can we borrow the money? And they'd say, this is how much it's going to cost you, and we'd feed that into the discount model. Okay. So that's nice and neat if it's here and now, but what you might not start this project for three or four years' time. So that's where we And use, all sorts of things can happen in the meantime. That's where we use internal rate of return. Right. So what we're doing with internal rate of return, we're trying to calculate the maximum discount rate that the project can bear before it, it, it goes no negative. Longer, yeah, before so it, it no longer gives us a return. Okay, so it's like where it breaks even, including the uh, the rate and including the discounting. Yes. Okay. So we're applying a higher and higher level of discount to test the project, okay. and it tells us the highest level. So when we walked into the bank, we'd maybe calculate. So how do you do it? Well, you, you, you can calculate the IRR, at the net present value at two levels and draw this little graph we've got here. And mm. where it crosses the zero, mm. that's the highest um, mm-hmm. internal rate of return. So in the example here, we've got an internal rate of return of um, 18%. So we could do that little calculation for our project. Then we go to the bank, and the bank says, oh, well, we'll lend you the money at 10%. And we go, oh, that's all right, because we can return 18 so that's 8% for us. If we go to the bank, they say we're only going to give you twenty-two percent. We go, well, we're only going to get eighteen percent from this that's project, right. and therefore we better go and find one that's better 
Yeah, it's not worth doing if you're going to lose money. No. Hmm. So, so, so IRR is a sort of benchmark. So even even though the actual physical money that's coming in the door is still undiscounted, you're actually going to get three thousand pounds. But your your view of it today is whatever it is, it's it's reduced by the discount factor. Yes, because so, it's costing us more to finance. The so no one's suggesting that you get the reduced amount of money. No. All they're suggesting is that you should view it as worth less. Yes. Or, 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 or of less worth yes. in the future. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. All right. So IRR is quite complicated, really, isn't it? It's it's com- concept of it. I think it's not because we're all used to putting money in building societies, and 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 it's, and it's a bit analogous to the interest rate you get in the building society. Well, it's not because so, if I put it in a building society, it goes up. Yes, I know. And what you're suggesting is it's going down. Yes. So it's not the same. Is but it? the return that you're getting is is that percentage return, eighteen percent or. Or twenty percent is the return that the project's going to make you. Well, I think yeah. I think in one instance you've got a positive rate, and the others you've got a negative rate. Yeah, okay. You've got a rate above one. So yes. Anyway, it doesn't matter that particularly, but it does seem a little bit complicated to me. Okay. The maths are more complicated than payback or net present value, because yeah, it just involves doing some more complex mathematics. That's right. So once again, you don't need to calculate all this. You yeah, just need to be aware of sort of the strengths and weaknesses and be able to describe them. Yeah, um, and maybe the relevance to a project manager. Hmm. So it's important to a project manager because if you've got a long project that takes a long time, then actually you're pushing back the returns hmm. further and further. Hmm. So they're discounted more and more. Yeah, and they do become more relevant the more sort of benefits management you do. Yes. Because benefits generally happen so some period after the end of the project yes project managers usually worry about cost yes so they won't they, they manage quite carefully the cost yes but they don't manage quite carefully the benefits and and by using these discounting um views of the world then um it it helps yeah at the end of the day though i mean even if something makes financial sense you still might not do it might you well, that comes into risk, <laughs> and pestle again. Pestle comes back. Well, here. hang on, but you've already you've already added risk into the discount factor. Um, you might, if you wanted to, maybe compare two projects. You might have one that's higher risk, so you might give yeah. it a higher rate to. Yeah. Okay. But with, the, with, with yeah, but having done all that, I've got a project that's going to make loads and loads of money. Yes. I still might choose not to do it because it's illegal. Yes. <laughs> or it doesn't. Yeah, well, right, okay. But I mean, or it might not fit in with your corporate strategy objectives. That's right. So we're a building firm, and I've got a really good project to build a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> you, you probably wouldn't yes. want to do it, or, you know. Or so, school. Or, or do we really want to do that? A good example is a school. You always quite, you know, you might be a house building firm, and they go, oh, oh, I could do some schools. Schools, that's right. Yeah, that'd be great. Look, that's right. Guaranteed that guaranteed revenue off the local yeah. authority, and then you find but it's not quite as easy yeah. as building a house or different. Yeah, but you see, I, I would argue that if you, if it is risky, that's built into the rate and makes it look less favourable. What you anyway. can do, what you can, what you can do is is put a higher rate on it. So if it's a new business area, yeah. you say not only do we want we don't want to get we normally accept ten percent, but because it's a risky project, we're going to have to. You're going to have to demonstrate 15%. But so it is project related? Yeah, the base rate is fixed, but then you adjust it depending on the risk. So you have a risk adjusted rate. Okay. okay. And similarly, you might have projects that um, don't make any money that you choose to do. Yes, like hospitals. Yeah. Well, yeah. Schools. But arguably, the benefit model is corrupt, but. Schools. Yeah, yeah. You know, why do, yeah. you, why do you educate children? There's no. <laughs> So that they can take part Direct in a political payback. debate, and <laughs> they can take, they take an active part of the democratic process. Yes. Actually, yes. oh first, yes, my mm. daughter, your daughter's at university, and my daughter's at university. Very expensive. <laughs> oh no, that's easy. <laughs> that's an easy discussion. Yes, yeah, they earn lots of money, yeah, pay their well, social security and taxes. That pays my pension. Yes, easy, maybe. easy <laughs> discussion. Good. So that's the management judgment bit, really. Yeah, yeah. you right. know. So you know, at the end of the day, the numbers. Just because it seems like a good financial deal, it's not necessarily going to be the right thing to do, and vice versa. Yeah. Okay. Questions. Don't forget the questions. Not going to ask you to do the maths. Thankfully. The importance of um, investment yeah. appraisal to project managers. Describe three. And Different describe techniques. the strengths and weaknesses of them. Yes. Typical question. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, Thank um, you, John. Bye. Thank you. Bye.
We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To order a study guide, e-learning, or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojectstraining.com.